Hello everyone. Welcome to the sessions of programming in Python. In today's session, we are going to focus on the topic exception handling. Uh, so as the literal meaning of the word exception goes, which means uh, anything unusual, anything extreme, right? So even in Python, sometimes things may go unexpected. If your programming is correct, if your instructions are correct, then obviously your machine is going to uh, run perfectly, it's going to output the right results. However, sometimes the code may go wrong uh, syntactically or logically, which may throw up an error. These are called as uh, exceptional cases, right? Uh, so during the runtime, if such exception comes, if such erroneous situation occurs, we should be in position to handle it. Uh, otherwise, it could be uh, it could create uh, hazards. Uh, for example, if uh, in Python you're ri uh, you're writing a code for a banking software or say a software for an aerospace software, uh, aerospace software, then what happens if something goes wrong in the middle? Uh, that can create a, a huge loss of uh, safety, uh, security. Uh, as well as revenue losses, right? So this is, as a software developer, uh, whatever logic and whatever code we write, we can never afford to have uh, errors coming up in, in the code, uh, exceptions coming up in the code. We should be handling it. So how do we handle exceptions in Python? Well, before we learn how to handle the exceptions in Python, we should know what are the keywords or the concept, concepts which is available to us. So first, uh, let's try to understand what is the basic syntax of uh, writing the code in a manner which can handle the exceptions. Let me uh, put it down. So as you can see here on the screen, there are two keywords written here. Uh, just like in the decision making, you have if and else uh, for the loops, you have while loop, for loop. Similarly, the concept of exception handling in Python has these two keywords, try and accept. So this is the very basic syntax. Any code that you want to run first, yeah, that is the real code that you want to run first. For example, I might want to take uh, a input from the user. For example, user input, okay? And this is the number which I want to take. So I'll use the int function to convert into numbers and I'll through the input function, I'm going to ask user to provide a number please enter a number okay so as you can see here what's happening is through the input function I'm asking user to provide a number and using integer function I'm converting into integer right and post that I'm going to print uh, maybe I'm going to half value maybe I'm going to divide that by uh, by two to reduce the value by half and this is what I'm going to print it here When reduced by half is <clears throat> something like this. So what's happening here? See, there is definitely a case if you are giving an actual number, uh, then it's going to run fine. But there could be a case when it asking you to provide a number. What if you provide an alphabet there? What if you provide say hash or at the rate or comma there? Something undesired. Then how is that? Uh, you know, irrelevant data which you have provided is going to be converted to integer. It cannot, right? So that's an error. Python is going to throw up an error. So when it throws up an error, that's uh, rather than preferring that your Python code should crash, what we have written here is we have put this block of code in try so that we are telling Python, try this, try this block of code. And if some error comes up, you're going to immediately jump uh, from the try block and you're going to come back here, okay? So I can write here, value error okay so i'm saying that in the event of accept value error and i'm going to write here a code like print the input you have provided is invalid okay okay so what i am doing here is instead of letting my python code crash i have print i have preferred Printing a message that your input uh, input that you have provided is invalid in this exception block. Okay, so I am catching this value error, 
right? So if I run this code, you will see that uh, it, the Python is prompting me to provide a value. If I say five, uh, it is running all fine, right? So if no error occurs, then only try block is going to be executed. Except block is going to be ignored. Just like your decision making, in decision making you have if and else, right? If the condition is true, then if block is going to be executed by the Python. Otherwise, if the condition becomes false, you execute the else block. In a similarly, you are running all the instructions that are present in the try block one by one, but somewhere in between, if any error comes up, rather than crashing, you immediately abort or jump out from this try block and you come back into the except block and you execute whatever is written here. So basically, except block is a plan B or a backup option. You don't want your Python to crash, rather execute this. Let me run this again now. This time I'm going to give you say A, okay? A, which is going to be converted to integer and divide to two, which is something invalid operation, right? So if I run this, you see, it immediately printed this, that the input you have provided is invalid, right? Okay, this is one. Uh, now what I have written here is, I am catching a very specific error, okay, which is value error. If I don't write this value error, then also it is fine. Uh, you know, these are the errors which are which have the categorizations. Something, some things are for the input, uh, invalid inputs. You have value error. If you are trying to divide, uh, uh, you know, a number by zero, then you get a zero division error. Uh, that's another category. If you are trying to opening up a file which is not present or whose access is denied, you get permission error. Or you know, so there are different kind of error. But you can always, uh, you know write only accept. If you are not aware that what kind of error you might face, if you want to be ready for any kind of error, you can just write accept so that beat any kind of error, you can jump directly here. If you want to handle only certain type of error, then you can write here that kind of error you get here. Okay. Now say suppose I want to handle another kind of error that is division by zero. Okay. So let me write here. Let me ask for another number like user input two. Okay, and I'm going to ask here two. Okay, and here I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the division. Okay, and here <clears throat> here I'm going to write the value of the result of division is okay. If I give the valid values, like if I give here ten, and thereafter I give here uh, three then you're going to see the valid answer right but let me give here in the first one let me give 10 and the next time I give zero okay what happens is you immediately see the Python is getting crashed isn't it and you can see that the category is zero division error so if I want to handle this error also then I'm going to write another except block that in the event if you're getting this error what I'm going to write is the second number is zero, which is invalid. You should have provided a valid value, right? <clears throat> so you can see here, I am trying out to execute a code. But if that, if that piece of code is throwing some error, I am catching that error and accordingly handling that error, okay? These errors always have categories. Now, whether it is value error or zero division error. In case I do not want, uh, you know, I am ready to uh, handle any kind of error, then rather than putting any specific categorization, I can just write try and accept. This is also works, okay? But however, when I'm writing the individual categories, then I am handling them individually. So let's see what happens now. If I'm giving the first number as 10 and the second number as zero, you see, I have handled that in the second exception, isn't it? So this is how the whole exception handling uh, concept works in Python. You have two keywords, try and accept. You have two blocks, try block and accept block. Any code that is your priority to run, uh, you know, and you want to run as a first priority, you put it in a try block, anything goes wrong, you always have a plan B or as a backup action which you write in an accept, okay? Now, another thing is, <clears throat> sometimes you might want to know what error has occurred, right? So there is a way to catch error. Here you knew that it could be a value error. Here you knew it could be a 
zero division error but you really want to know what kind of error it is then there is a syntax to write i can write except exception as error okay so this is some temporary variable which is going to store catch your exception data and store in it i could have written error or i could have written data also okay now let me print here data okay so what's going to happen is remember this exception that you write it has capital e so what's going to happen is if something was wrong here obviously it is going to throw an error you immediately abort this try block and you're going to come back here so when you write your except block in this particular format the exception that is being raised the exception situation that has come up it is going to be caught the details are going to be captured and stored in this particular variable which you can print thereafter so if i run this and i say now maybe 15 and i say maybe at the rate i'll say okay what it says here is invalid for integer with base 10 okay so here you got the data okay the same thing if i run 10 and if i say 0 it says division by 0 error right so this is these are the ways to handle the exception uh, <clears throat> remember one thing if you're writing try you cannot just have try you will always have to couple it with accept just like uh, you know unlike if and else wherein if can exist independently however else cannot if you want to use else you should always have a preceding if right so if and else go hand in hand in a similar way try and accept go hand in hand if you're writing a try block you will have to write accept block because what if something goes wrong here you definitely need a accept block to execute right apart from this accept there, there is another two block which you can associate your error handling with one is else block and then is one is finally block okay what's happening here is see the <clears throat> as you know these are the two things together if your try block is successfully executed top to bottom then obviously your except block is not executed right but if something goes wrong at any point of time you execute this when does else block is, it gets executed the else block gets executed if your except block did not get executed okay and your finally block gets executed every time okay so i can show you here that print i am in try block okay and then the same thing i can write here i am in accept block and the same thing i can write here or else i am in else block finally block now let me try to do one thing let me create here a list here something like say <clears throat> colors is equal to i'm going to create a list of colors red orange purple violet Okay, I'm going to print here the color. Okay, color whatever is stored at the zeroth position. All right. So let's see what happens. If I run this, you will see that I am printing red. So there was no error. So I have printed. I was. In, I am in try block. And then, because not there were no errors reported, exception block has been skipped, and you executed else block. Right? Because because exception was ex uh, not executed, you are coming into else block. Okay, and finally blocks always get executed okay so if you have certain task okay and you are executing or running the task here and you're ready to handle any errors then you write the handling code here and if no error comes here maybe you can write here uh, task successfully completed okay maybe because maybe because you're sure that since this is not uh, executed obviously uh, the task must have completed right so that is why else is okay when i say finally uh, whether there were errors or there were no errors you still want to do something then you write that in finally block okay now let me introduce here some error i am going to write here i am going to access the 15th index now there is no 15th position here right 0 1 2 3 there are only three positions because there are uh, just four elements here and i am trying to access 15 right so what's going to happen is if I run this, you will see that try block got aborted because there was an error here, isn't it? And it says I am in except block. Now, since except block has been executed, the else block is going to be skipped. 
and like I said, find the block always gets executed, right? So this is how it works. And now let me write here another piece of code that can showcase you uh, how each block could be useful to you, could be of your purpose. Try, accept, else, and finally. See, it is not necessary that you use the rest of them. Uh, your code can work with try and accept also. You can enclose your code, whether the whole code or a piece of code, you can use try and accept n number of times. You know, uh, time and again, repeatedly, you can put try and accept, try and accept, and you can put any number of codes here, you know, from top to bottom, because uh, you're just, you are just being, you're just playing safe. Uh, you're trying to execute some code and if something goes wrong, you have a backup option, right? And this, what you see here, is a classic example of, you know, I'm trying to ask a number, trying to divide something. If there's a value error, I am handling it here. The else block is, so this else block is executed only if there are no exception raised in try block. Yep. And finally, is, the business block is always executed, regardless of whether an exception is raised or not. Okay. So as you can see here, I'm printing, I'm doing my calculations in try, something goes wrong, I am uh, printing a valid error message. If uh, there were no errors, then I'm printing the results, else I'm just providing some gratitude message that thank you for using the program, okay? So this was about uh, exception handling, okay? Another concept that you're going to learn now is raising an exception okay so it's something like how do you raise an exception okay so you yourself are going to raise an exception like i said all this while python was automatically detecting it's a invalid input you're trying to divide by zero isn't it but now what if you want to uh, raise your own exception with your own uh, individual uh, error message, then how do you do it? do it? Let's try to understand. For example, now here I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to create a function maybe, uh, define, uh, okay, let, let me take an input from the user, input, user, input, int, okay. And I'm going to check if user input let me make it more meaningful variable is less than 2000 and I'm going to say raise so error if you want to raise an error by yourself if you want to raise an error by yourself you should use the keyword raise okay and I can say value e error okay and within the brackets i can write a message your age is the age provided is less than 2000 which is invalid users born after 2000 are preferred okay so this is is this is my error uh, this is my error message now if if i run this particular piece of code you can see that it's asking me my my age if i say 2005 and it's going to be fine yeah no errors but if i run this code and if i say 1995 it's going to give an error right and the message is this isn't it as you can see here now if you as you know that this is the error which you yourself are raising with a meaningful message, what if you want to handle it? You don't want your uh, piece of code to crash. So you can, perhaps you can put this in try block like this, okay? And then as an except, maybe I can write, print, some error has occurred, okay? So I am trying out some code, okay? If something goes wrong, I know that I'm going to raise an error by myself. And since an error is raised, I know that I'm going to jump away from the try block and come into the accept block. And in accept block, I am printing a message here. Some error has occurred. So you can see that if I put here 1985 or 1975, 
you see a message has come some error has occurred and like i said if you don't want to print your own message but rather you want to catch what error has come up and what is the error message then you can write or modify the uh, except keyword here you can write it in this format you can write exception e capital remember exception as maybe e okay i can give here any variable whether it's e or error let me give error here because it's more meaningful and i can write here the message in more meaningful way error has occurred okay the details are now after this i'm going to print error okay so if i run this and i give here 1800 okay and it says that error has occurred the details are the age provided is less than 2000 which is invalid users born after 2000 are preferred so as you can see here i am handling my error in this exception handling right okay so this is one this is how you raise an error uh, why would you need to raise an error maybe because you are developing a code and you want to check multiple conditions okay numerous condition you want to check and if certain condition is something which is undesirable to you any input any condition uh, any want to handle it or you don't want to proceed in a code maybe you can prefer to raise an error okay so that user know oh something is wrong you are trying to read a file but file doesn't exist give an error there yeah so this is how we use raising an error and this is the concept of handling an error another concept that i would like to bring into your focus is if you are trying to raise an error by checking or validating certain condition then there is another keyword uh, which is present at your disposal which you can utilize and that is the concept of asserting a condition okay and you can see here that how do you assert a condition and what does it mean to assert a condition so when you run a program you might want to keep checking uh, if this condition is met or that condition is met uh, all the while uh, <clears throat> the input data that is coming is fine but for you it is not desired for you it's a invalid uh, value for example i write data 1 is equal to 50 and i write data 2 is equal to 0 if i try to do the division here data 1 divided by data 2 then obviously you know that it is going to throw up an error because data 2 is zero right so if i try to print the result here it's going to throw up an error isn't it like this right zero division error but why should you let python go into the error situation you yourself can be uh, you know be sure that the data were was correct already isn't it so you can assert beforehand that data 2 is not zero so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to put the keyword assert here so what assert does it asserts a condition okay it establishes the fact that it is true if it is not true if it is not true then you can raise a customized error message for example i say error uh, assert data 2 not equal to 0 okay here what i'm checking is it is not equal to 0 if it is true it's going to well and good if it is false then this message that i'm writing uh, separated by comma and put in the uh, string quotes i will write the data 2 is 0 okay invalid input so what kind of error this is going to raise it is going to raise assert uh, assertion error okay because you are asserting something you can write as many assertion as you want okay for example here i can write data 1 should be less than should be should be greater than 50 and i can write here the data 1 is not greater than 50 so when you are writing any code uh, you are going from top to bottom executing your code and if you want to test your own conditions okay and if certain condition is not met you can assert these conditions like this as a fact if they are true if they are true then nothing is going to happen the code is going to run uh, normally something like this <clears throat> uh, so as you can see here if i give here 80 and i am going to give here 2 if i run this you will see that it says 40 right but the moment i make it 20 which is obviously this assertion will fail i am going to get a message here the data is not greater than 50 isn't it 
so i am throwing up an error if you want to um, handle the error perhaps i could have put rather put it under a try block please try out these assertions if something goes wrong let me handle it by except exception as data print data so what i'm going to do is i am going to uh, catch the error message and print it idly okay so look at this okay if i run this something is wrong okay it's a indentation issue yep so as you can see here that python did not crash i just handled it i caught the error and i printed the error right so this is what something you can do and if i change this to zero you will see that this assertion will get failed and this error message shall be populated yeah so as you can see here that uh, let me make it uh, 90 here first perfect and you can see here that the second assertion failed See, it is not necessary to put in try and accept block. It is just that it was my choice to put this block of code because I knew that an error could be raised from here. The assertion error. The assertion error are we, I am trying to assert the truthfulness of certain uh, conditions. If they are true, I'm going to uh, move on. Normally, if they are false, I'm going to raise an error, an assertion error uh, with this particular uh, message. Okay, so this is the style in which you raise an assertion error. Okay, and this by writing the raise keyword i can give the class of what kind of error it is and then i can give here the message here so this is another way okay and just like uh, you know i was using raise here i could have also used assert here if if you want to see how i could have utilized the assert here so i am asserting this and i could have just put here comma and this yeah so instead of raising uh, any specific uh, error this is also another way to do it. So let me run this piece of code. If I'm running this and I say 1950, you see, it's the same thing. So well, concluding the concept, uh, the exception handling uh, is a concept in Python which can handle any errors or exceptions which are coming up during the normal execution of your code and you don't want your code to crash or behave unusually, abnormally. Rather, you want to handle those exceptions. You want to handle those error situations. And that's why you have certain blocks like add, try, accept, and you know, the else and finally, you can utilize them interchangeably if you want to write a safe and good code. And uh, if you don't want to leave a raising of an error onto the computer and you have in your own mind that I want to test this condition and that conditions, for the values and want to raise the error myself, then you can use assert or raise keyword. Okay, so this was all about uh, the exception handling in Python. Uh, for more, please go through the notes which are associated with this particular uh, session. And any queries, just reach out to me individually. Thank you.